At this point now, we're going to move from the front of the camera, the lens, and we're gonna to move to the back of the camera, the sensor. We've really not talked about how an image is recorded. I've been talking about this mysterious photosensitive material, and now we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about it. Uh, modern digital cameras uh, use typically what is called a CMOS sensor, a complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Uh, these largely replaced their predecessors, which was the CCD, the charged coupled device. We're not gonna talk about the physics of these. That is an entire course on its own. These are incredible marvels of engineering um, that initially were developed in the 1960s and have over the decades been refined and refined and miniaturized and made more efficient, which has led to the digital revolution of us having super megapixel cameras in our, in our pockets. But there are a few things I want you to understand about this. At its core, what a CMOS sensor does, what a CCD sensor, frankly, what film does and what the, the back of the, of the eye does, um, the retina, is it converts light into a different signal. Um, so here it, turn, it converts it into a visual signal to transmit it to the back of your brain for visual processing. Uh, in a 35 millimeter uh, uh, negative, it, can, it, it uses a photo, uh, a photo uh, uh, process to convert light um, into something that can be recorded and exposed and made into an image. And here we can convert it into a digital signal. So it's think of it as sort of an analog to digital converter. We're gonna take photons and we're gonna bring pixels out. And these things have these little wells which correspond to pixels and we're going to read out um, the amount of light that strikes. And one of the most important things here because it really impacts in many ways the quality and the nature of a digital image is how we record in color. So first of all, let's talk about color for a second. So what is a color image? You've got a bunch of pixels. Let's say I have a thousand by thousand pixel image. And every pixel has three colors associated with it. Red, green, and blue, the primary colors. And so you would think that a camera would have to record at every pixel, well, how much red light came in in that part of the visible spectrum, how much green light in that part of the visible spectrum, and how much blue light. Um, and in fact, Back in the day, the original digital cameras, which were huge, had three sensors and some beam splitting optics that split the light into three sensors. But that meant you were reducing the light input by a factor of three. You had three sensors, which was very expensive. And you had a low light yield because you were splitting the light. And so what modern cameras do is they cheat, honestly. And what they do is they slap down onto the sensor this thing called a color filter array. This is a very particular one called a Bayer pattern, which is probably the most common one. And what these things do, you can sort of see the colors here, and on top of each of these colors is a little tiny lens that focuses the light that, that um, uh, is, is brought down onto that. And each pixel, so each of those little cells that you're seeing right here, is, a, is going to correspond to a, a single pixel. And you can see that this cell up here, for example, is going to record the red light. It's colored red. The next one is gonna be green, and then red, and then green, and then the blues, and so on and so forth. Um, and so what's happening is that every pixel, we're only recording one of the values that I need for a full-blown RGB, red, green, blue image. And we're doing that because we can get away with it with only a single sensor. But now something is a little odd. So let me reproduce the Bayer pattern right here. So think about this as a six by six pixel image. I've got six columns and six rows. And what I've done is I've recorded a bunch of green pixels, if you will, a bunch of red pixels and a bunch of blue pixels. And what I mean by that is I've recorded how much incident light was on the sensor in the green, red, and blue part of the visible spectrum. So, but something's missing. Oh, by the way, why is green overrepresented here? Notice that there's a lot more green pixels than red and blue. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. By the way, your retina is the same way. We oversample in the green part of the visible spectrum. The reason is that um, we, the human visual system, is more sensitive to the green part of the visible spectrum than red and blue. And in fact, out in the world, there are more things in the green part of the visible spectrum than in red and blue, which of course is why we're more sensitive. So, but what it means is down here where I have my three channel, um, R, G, B image, I'm missing a bunch of pixels. All of these black pixels here are missing, right? Because notice what I've done up here. I've taken the red pixels from up top and I've dropped them down below. 
green, green, blue, blue. Green is okay, but there's still every other pixel is missing. And red and blue are incredibly undersampled. And so in fact, in a modern digital camera, for years, for decades, we are only recording one third of all the pixels we need to represent a full-blown RGB color image. So what do we do? Well, we cheat, we interpolate. So for example, let's look at this pixel right here in the green channel. It is surrounded by a bunch of other pixels. Let's call their values A, B, C, D, whatever, how much light impinged on those particular pixels. And in the middle, I'm gonna do something simple like, for example, average the values. Yeah, that makes pretty good sense. It's hard to imagine that that pixel right there is fundamentally different than everything around it because the world tends to be relatively smooth and only at transitions between light and dark, for example, on my lapel right here, will you see a big change. But since these pixels are really, really small, you can get away with this type of interpolation. Now, this is a pretty simple, simplistic version of interpolation. And in reality, what cameras do is something a little bit more involved. So standard, really simple things are things like bilinear and bicubic interpolation. Uh, more sophisticated interpolation algorithms are gradient-based, adaptive color plane, smooth hue transition, and there are dozens and dozens of these. Some of them are proprietary for particular cameras for how to go from this thing right here to a full-blown RGB color image. I'm not gonna talk about the details of these because frankly, they're not that important. They're all variations on a, th on a theme of interpolating. But what is important to understand is that the image you have recorded is in fact, it is creating pixels whole cloth by interpolating all of the missing pixels from the underlying bare pattern. So now that gets us to pixels. So we've got this sensor, this electronic sensor, which converts light into a digital signal telling me how much light there is. Um, I interpolate those missing pixels to give me a full-blown red, green, and blue image. And now, what do I have in terms of pixels? Well, typical digital cameras today represent every pixel as an 8-bit per channel. So what that means is every pixel in the red channel, every pixel in the green channel, and every pixel in the blue channel has a value between 0 and 255. So that is 8-bit means I have 2 to the 8, 256 possible values, 0 to 255. And so, for example, if I have a value of 0, it means it's black. And if I have a value of 255, it's maximal uh, value. So what I'm showing you here, for example, in each column is in the red channel, a 255 value means I have really, really bright red. And as that value goes down, it gets darker and darker red. Same with the green, same with the blues. So, for example, this pixel right here, which is completely black, is made up of three values. Zero blue, zero green, zero red. Uh, this pixel right here, which is white, is made up of maximal amount of red, green, and blue. 255, 255, 255. I pack them together, and I see a white pixel. By the way, why white? Well, because they're equally represented, and so now I've spanned the entire part of the visible spectrum, and I have white light. Um, what about something in the middle? Well, if I have the same amount of, say, red, green, and blue at, say, 100, uh, say 53 pixel value, well, then I have a gray pixel um, because it's not quite black, there's some value, but it's not quite white because it's not 255. And of course, I get color by mixing and matching. So for example, if I take pure red, 255 here, and I take no green, zero, I've knocked it out, and I take no blue, I've knocked it out, well then I get a red pixel. All red, no green, no blue, and so on and so forth. I mix and match those three colors to get all the other colors. All right, let's do an exercise. Please write for me uh, some code that generates this 256 by 256 image. So I have 256 columns and 256 rows. In this image, the value of each pixel in the i-th row, i of course going from 1 to 256 or 0 to 255 if you want to count by 0, of the red channel is i times 0 0.0039. I just made up that value because it creates this pretty picture here. The value of each pixel in the i-th image row of the green channel is 1 minus that value, and every pixel in the blue channel is fixed at 1. Okay. 
Now, here we're going to encode pixels on a value of 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 255. It's just a normalization. So think about everything I just said and divide by 255. And what you'll see in the computer vision literature and the image processing literature is people bounce around between normalized pixel units, 0 to 1, and 8-bit pixel values between 0 and 255. And I'm just going to go ahead and suggest that you display this image with matplotlib, pyplot, imshow, which will be happy to take images scaled between 0 and 1. So again, every row here is specified by a very particular pairing of red, green, and blue. The red has i times 0 0.0039, where i is what row you're in. And then the green channel is 1 minus that, and the blue channel is fixed at 1. So you're going to make a three-channel RGB image. Pack in the red, pack in the green, pack in the blue, and then display the image. All right, go ahead and pause the video and please try this exercise. All right, I hope you worked through that exercise. Let me go through my solution. So almost always I'm going to import NumPy and I'm going to again import a matplotlib so I can do some of the M show. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and specify a variable for how big my image is, 256 by 256. It's a square image. I'm going to initialize that to be a three-dimensional matrix, n by n, 256 by 256, cross three, red, green, and blue. So we tend to think of images as these flat things, but the reality is there's a color depth there. And so images are, in fact, three values for every value in a pixel. Now, what do I want to do? I want to change the RGB values from their current initialization of zero based on the row value. So I'm going to go from 0 to n minus 1, 255. Um, so i is going to be my row number. And now I'm going to just play around with all of the values in each row. So here's the, the first, va the first uh, parameter here is the row, column, color channel. And I'm going to set that in the red channel, which is indexed on 0, the green channel on 1, and the blue um, channel on 2, to i times 0 0.039. The green channel is 1 minus that, and the blue channel is fixed at 1. So there's just that definition I gave you. And then I'm going to go ahead and just plot the image, and then you get that guy right there. Okay. So a little exercise in creating these uh, images. These are these 3D um, entities, RGB, and then just packing in some pixel values. And you, by the way, you can play around with these different values here, and you'll get very cool different effects depending on how you define that. All right, so what have we done? Um, we, we sort of talked about sensors very briefly because we're not going to talk about the electronics and the physics and the, the whole mechanism by which light is converted from photons into a digital signal. The important thing here is at the back of the camera is a sensor. That sensor has a bunch of cells corresponding to pixels. Those cells, however, only record one third of the light that you need to generate a full-blown RGB red, green, blue color image. The rest are interpolated. And underneath it, those images are always going to be represented as typically 8-bit, either scaled between 0 and 255 or 0 and 1, um, three values per pixel corresponding to red, green, and blue.